Hello there. This is Gus the Wise. Do you know what fish is the best fighter? Yeah, swordfish. We talked a little about love before. How how it gets twisted. About some simple things like schooling and and work and sports and things where you love what you're doing and you're hating the other side those are kind of easier when it gets hard is when you get into your politics and your religion and people that have done you bad d deeds and done done you wrong that's when it's hard to forgive because that's hitting the core of what you believe and what you who you are but the Savior, he said, we forgive all men. So in this here book, 100 Most Influential People in History, he put Muhammad first because of the impact and change on, on the world, and Isaac Newton second because he started the scientific discovery and the method and is really the father of all the science we do today. And he put Jesus Christ third, which I didn't really like. But he explained why he did it, which I thought was very interesting, in the end of that chapter. And this is what Jesus taught. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And a few lines earlier, he said, Christ said, Resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. This is what I thought was interesting. Now these ideas, which are not a part of the Judaism of Jesus' day, nor of most other religions, are surely among the most remarkable and original ethical ideas ever presented. If they were widely followed, I would have had no hesitation in placing Jesus first in this book. But the truth is that they are not widely followed. In fact, they are not even generally accepted. Most Christians consider the injunction to love your enemy as at, best, at most an ideal which might be realized in some perfect world but one which is not a reasonable guide of conduct in the actual world in which we live. We do not normally practice it, do not expect others to practice it, and do not teach our children to practice it. Jesus' most distinctive teaching, therefore, remains an intriguing but basically untried suggestion. That's a sad commentary of Christianity today that seems, I'm afraid, largely true. But what we got to do, true Christians, true believers, is to actually love your enemies, actually want the best for them, actually try to lift them and build them up. The principles can be bad, but we don't hate the people. Principles will tear people down and destroy their lives. But don't hate the people. So that's the challenge. That's what we're trying to do here. And it's hard. But commit to making an effort. So hit your like and your share. Subscribe to this channel. And make some comments to let us know what you're thinking about and if we can do it any better or what you're thinking, what you want to have happen here. Anyway, thanks for listening.